Keeping to shadowy doorways wherever possible, you make your way swiftly along Corpse Way towards Dead Men's Gate. As you approach the gate, out of the corner of your eye, you notice a movement in a darkened alleyway. Instantly, two figures step out into the street in front of you. One is a gaunt-looking character, holding a cruel saber and with a frayed noose around his neck. The other is an attractive Kulian woman, with her long, shining black hair twisted into a plait, wearing finely made leather armor and wielding a thin sword. You recognize the first of your assailants from tales you have heard on your travels. He is the notorious pirate Silas Gallows. His companion is Wu Lin, a mercenary who joined Cinnabar's crew not long before the pirate lord was killed. Both bear the insignia of the Pirates of the Black Skull. So here we are at Dead Man's Gate, chuckles Silas Gallows, and soon there's going to be one more corpse in Corpse Way. Wu Lin says nothing but advances towards you, her gleaming blade raised. Beat them win. Just outside the city walls lies the cemetery. Its pillared entrance is decorated with disturbing statues, and the fog merely adds to the eerie atmosphere of the place. Creeping between the weathered tombstones and mausoleums, you suddenly hear the crack of a twig somewhere off to your left and almost jump out of your skin. Spinning round, you are sure you catch a glimpse of something disappearing behind a grim sepulcher. You are not alone in the cemetery. Something else is also prowling around here during the hours of darkness. Peering round the corner of a crypt, you see two men, who look like sailors, walking away from you through the mist, carrying a heavy-looking chest between them. Where can they be going? And what are they up to? Follow the two men to see where they go. The smugglers eventually stop outside an old tomb overgrown with moss and ivy. Pushing open the granite door, they disappear inside. You wait a few minutes before lighting your lantern and passing through the portal yourself. Your lantern reveals a passageway leading away into the gloom. As soon as you step over the threshold, another light becomes visible at the other end of the corridor and starts to move towards you. Gliding along the passage is the apparition of an old man with sunken eye sockets and talon-like fingernails clogged with grave dirt. The sight of the glowing specter fills you with a sense of dread, and your blood runs cold when you see that the lantern it carries has been fashioned from a human skull. From the tales you have heard told of the Port of Crabs, you know that this must be the ghostly Jack O' Lantern. The ghost does not attack you, but instead comes to a halt a few meters from you. Its jaw drops open, and the apparition utters one word. Password. Folklore has it that, in the past, pirates would kill one of their crewmen at the place where they buried their treasure, or at a location they wanted kept secret, so that in death the ghost would guard it unsleepingly. This is obviously what Cinnabar did here. Confidently, you speak the password. Crossbones. Holding your breath, you await Jack O'Lantern's reaction. You may pass, hisses the pirate ghost as he sinks into the earth in front of you. Not waiting to be told twice, you hurry along the passageway, which ends in a flight of steps that descend under the cemetery. At the end of a short passageway, you come to a T-junction. You can hear some noises to the right. You decide to be cautious and go left. You find yourself exploring the pirate's hideout, a collection of meeting rooms, storerooms, and sleeping chambers, but all appear to be deserted. You, our first assumption that the place is deserted, proves to be correct. Unhindered, you begin to search the rooms more thoroughly. Rummaging through chests and overturning boxes, you find a sword, enough provisions for five meals, and a total of ten gold pieces. You are lucky. You also uncover a peculiar eight-sided blue gem in a silk-lined box. Having completed your search, you decide that it is time to find out what is going on here, so you head in the other direction past the T-junction. The tunnel soon ends at a closed door. From beyond it, you hear the sound of something large moving around, and there is an almost overpowering musky animal odor. Boldly, you fling open the door. The monster that is trapped inside the room immediately turns to face you. It looks like a huge predatory cat with a fiery red coat and mane, 
a ridge of spikes growing from its spine, and huge fangs. Lashing behind the beast are several long, snake-like tails, each ending in a stinging barb. This is truly a cat o' nine tails. You're somehow going to have to get past this monster if you are to find the Pirates of the Black Skull. With a roar, the mutant bounds towards you, whipping its barbed tails at you in a sudden strike. You manage to dodge the creature's initial assault, but now you must go on the attack. The battle begins, you get wounded during the fight, but manage to kill the beast. Exhausted after such a titanic struggle, you take a few minutes to recover from the fight. Once you have caught your breath, you take a look at your surroundings. Now that you are no longer being threatened by a ravening monster, you take time to look around the room you are in. It is a Spartan affair, containing just a few pieces of broken furniture, but on the other side of it is a door leading onwards. You also notice an entrance to a cave with the iron portcullis that barred it raised. Obviously, the pirates let the Nine Tails out into the main room to stop anyone from following them. The mutant itself was captured by Cinnabar on one of his voyages and brought back to the Port of Crabs to guard the entrance to his innermost sanctum. Carefully, you open the door. You find yourself at the back of a vast hall, which is packed with black-robed devotees and scurvy-looking pirates. Ducking down behind a stack of crates, you see that at the other end of the great chamber is a huge, grotesque effigy. The thing has a skeletal human body with an oversized skull. Around the grinning skull is a feathered headdress, and in each hand is a blazing torch. Surely this statue is a likeness of the cruel voodoo death god Queskari. Standing before the statue is a man you recognize. He still wears the fine, gold-braided scarlet coat of a nobleman and a large tricorn hat, but his flesh is now a sickly greenish-gray, and pus oozes from great gashes and holes in his skin. The pirate lord's fine black hair and beard is now a straggly mess, and his jaundiced yellow eyes stare wildly from shadowy sockets. Cinnabar. Then the rumors were true. Miral the Red did find her captain's body. With the help of Queskari's devotees and their dark, forbidden practices, he has been brought back to life. The pirate lord addresses the throng. Pirates of the Black Skull, Tonight we sail for Bone Island. There the ritual to complete my resurrection will take place, and then, invulnerable, and with the power of Queskari at our disposal, we shall return to this vermin hole and exact our revenge. The Port of Crabs will be ours. A great cheer of approval rises from the amassed followers of Queskari, and your blood runs cold. Although you have no love for the port, should Cinnabar take it over, no lawful city anywhere along the coast will be safe from buccaneers and freebooters. He must be stopped. Suddenly you feel a strong hand on your shoulder, and you spin round to see two ugly rogues standing behind you. You soon find yourself dragged before the undead pirate lord in front of Queskari's statue. In seconds he has pronounced his sentence, and as you are taken away, he addresses his crew again. We sail with the tide at midnight. Following their captain, the pirates swiftly file out of the shrine. Meanwhile, you are taken to a pit at one end of the chamber and tied by your wrists to metal rings in the wall at the bottom of the pit. The pirates then abandon you to join their fellows. It is then that you notice a small hole in the bottom of the wall, through which water is starting to enter the pit. The hole links the pit with the sea. As the tide rises, so the pit fills with water, and soon you will be totally submerged. The water is already up to your waist. You pull on the rings, but they are securely embedded in the wall, and the rope shows no sign of breaking either. Rubbing the serrated edges of the shark tooth bracelet against the rope, you soon cut through the strands. You free yourself just before the water filling the pit covers your head. Climbing out of a potentially watery grave, you find your backpack and sword dumped nearby. Luckily, nothing has been taken. Without further delay, you hurriedly head off after the pirates. You soon find yourself at the edge of a huge natural cavern, inside which the sea has formed a large bay. At the far end of the cave is an entrance large enough to admit a sailing vessel. And sure enough, 
moored to a jetty at the edge of the water, is a great galleon. The ship flies the skull and crossbones flag common to all pirate vessels, and instead of a figurehead, you are disturbed to see a the Virago leaves the port of crabs behind under cover of darkness. When you are sure the coast is clear, you creep out of the room into a corridor. To your right is a door with the brass plaque, Captain, fixed to it. At the far end of the corridor, a staircase descends into the galleon. Another passage runs off from the first to your left, with a door at its far end and two unmarked doors to the left and right. What would you like to do? One. If you want to open the far door. Two. To open the door to the left. Three. If you wish to open the door to the right. Four. To open the door marked Captain. Five. If you want to descend the staircase. Tell me your choice in the comment section below. The most popular choice will decide in which direction the story will go.